Welcome uh, back to the uh, development track at the FrostCon Cloud Edition 2021. As you can probably hear, this talk will be in English. Uh, and Manisha will explain us how we will successfully deploy servers in an application-centric way. And yeah. without further ado, stage is yours. And if you Thank have you. questions, um, people at the stream, please join the video conference and type them in the chat. Thank you so much. So I am Manisha Singhar. I come from India, uh, but I'm living in Munich, Germany since last four years. I came here for my master's at TU Munich, but now working as a full-time software developer at Artix AG. My first introduction to open source was in college where I, with my friend, attended a cool workshop by Mozilla where they were talking about how I can contribute in free open source. And I was really intrigued. And I always wanted to uh, contribute in it, but I didn't know how. But luckily, the company I work for is a Linux open source company named Artix AG. So uh, first, uh, I'll talk. Uh, so, the, uh, so today's presentation topic is deploying servers in application-centric way. But First, I'll talk a little bit about my company. So Artix AG is a Munich-based uh, Linux and open source company, which uh, helps you automate and simplify your data centers. So we mainly work in four areas, namely consulting, engineering, support, and training. Consulting, uh, consulting team helps, in impl uh, helps you implement a completely new solution. Or if you ha already have your existing Linux in infrastructure, we help you extend it. And uh, since we are working in open source, so we provide uh, various trainings as well for configuration management tools like Puppet, Solstack, Ansible, or containers like uh, uh, Docker, Kubernetes. And we have our own data center management solution named Orkirino, and we provide training in that as well. Our support uh, team mainly help you manage and make sure that your server run properly and they are available for you 24 7. and our engineering team makes sure that all your software and hardware solutions are full uh, requirements are fulfilled and your uh, servers runs uh, smoothly so uh, our manage, uh, management and sales team together with our consulting engineering and support and training teams uh, make sure that we help you simplify your data centers. As I told before that we mainly work on automating your data centers. So we offer Linux, various Linux distributions like Red Hat, SUSE, Ubuntu, Debian, CentOS, et cetera. And we also offer uh, configuration management tools like Puppet, Solstack, Ansible, and containers like Docker, Kubernetes. So suppose if you already have a SUSE system and you want uh, to uh, configure your data center using Ansible. So our consultant and support help you uh, build a solution based on that. We have our own uh, complete data center management uh, solution named Arduino. It provides system lifecycle management through a simple, easy to use interface. In particular, Arduino supports automated host deployment, configuration management, and patch management. And Orkidana is based on Foreman open source uh, project and always include a Catello plugin for added content management capabilities. Uh, Artix also offers a open source conference in October every year. So this year, it is from 4th of October till 6th of October. Uh, it is called Open Source Aut Automation Days, or OSED for short where we talk about cloud, DevOps, containerization, and we have various workshops as well. And since we all know that artificial is a really uh, cool technology uh, that to automate your stuff. So this year, we are also offering you talks on uh, how you can use artificial intelligence uh, in DevOps and to automate your data center. So uh, I'm uh, talking about data center and automation. So let me give you a, a quick example on how to run a data center. So a data center is a 
it can be one or multiple servers. So first you have to initialize your server, organize it, manage it, and implement it. And when you want to automate it, what you basically want is you want to automate the rollout of the servers or release of the servers. And once they are rolled out, uh, you have option to individually manage your servers, but uh, that would be, uh, but what uh, would be a better idea will, will be to uh, manage it uh, or patch it at one place. So our Arduino tool does that for you. And if you want to uh, manage your servers, it should be easy to use to manage the servers. And our Arduino tool does that. And when you want to uh, manage your servers and manage your configuration parameters, instead of ha uh, having it in different servers, they should be centrally stored and managed. And one, uh, if there are changes in servers, they should be visible uh, at uh, central locations. And there should be uh, feedback options as well uh, so that uh, can give you uh, information on reports on uh, if the deployment was successful or if any task is running, then if it's running fine and give information about that as well. So as I told before that Arduino is based on uh, for Foreman, which is an open source project. So let me give you uh, ex explanation about that as well. So the Foreman project is an open source project initiated in 2009 by Ohad Levy. It is a life cycle, data center life cycle management tools for physical or virtual servers. So if you want to deploy bare metal servers, or if you want to use VMware uh, virtual servers like VMware, Overt, or so cloud services like AWS, you can use that. It is basically based on Ruby on Rails. It uses uh, different languages as well, like JavaScript, React, and some of the plugins of Foreman uses Python or Java as well, but the core of the Foreman is written in Ruby on Rails. It is mainly used to provision the servers. Uh, the Foreman itself is a building block of life cycle management tool, but you can extend it using plug various plugins. For example, if you want to use a compute resource, so there are plugins for VMware, Overt, AWS, etc. Or, or if you want to use a particular configuration management tool, like Ansible or Salt Stick, then they are uh, plugged for that as well. And it helps you manage tasks and reports. So it, for example, if a non-technical person wants to know uh, the status of the server, it, the foreman can send you an email about the uh, server as well. So let's talk about the feature of the foreman. For that, I'll give you an example. Suppose you want to deploy a host. For that, first you have to select the operating system. Uh, there are various Linux uh, operating systems available, like CentOS, SUSE, Red Hat, Ubuntu, Oracle, etc. So once you select the operating system, now you have to decide if you want to deploy it bare metal or using virtual servers. Uh, for virtual servers, uh, physical virtual servers, there are VMware, Proxmox, Overt available, and for cloud service, uh, you have Azure, Google Cloud, AWS. So once the uh, server is deployed, you have to configure it. And again, there are plugins available like Puppet, Solstack, Ansible, and you can you can use any one of them uh, to configure it. Once the uh, server is deployed and configured, you have to always maintain it and update it. And there are particular uh, plugins available for that as well. Now, uh, let me give you one example on how you can deploy a host. So suppose uh, there are three houses, and uh, you want to monitor the electricity usage of those three houses. So Prometheus is a, a monitoring system that uses, uh, uses time series databases, and Grafana is a a system or server that analyze or visualize the time series database of Prometheus. So what you can do is install an individual server in three houses. So Prometheus uh, servers in three houses and connect it to Grafana server. So Foreman is a host-centric deployment uh, 
tool, which means it deploys individual host. So for this web application scenario, what you will do is first you will individually configure each and every host and you will provision these four hosts. And once uh, you provision it, you have to ensure that all hosts are up and running and connected to each other, which means uh, that hosts uh, need to talk to each other multiple times. Because for example, uh, if I want to analyze data of house one, first the Grafana uh, server will ask the permission to Prometheus house one that if I can use your database and if the house one has the permission, then it will send the database to the Grafana and Grafana can analyze it. And same goes with uh, house two and house three. So this goes multiple times and you can, uh, it is possible that you can contact the host multiple time in right sequence, but this can only be achieved using Ansible playbooks. So if you create tasks like, uh, task like Grafana uh, should talk to Prometheus one and then Prometheus one to Grafana and for same for uh, Prometheus two and three, but only if everything is in one playbook, which would not be possible if you are host centric because they only focuses on a uh, host, not the whole web application. Now this is where uh, our new uh, uh, form and plugin named application centric deployment comes to this rescue. So uh, basically, uh, if you want to co configure your host, what you uh, you hope that they are connected to each other, but ideally you want to have a template configure everything at one place and can have parameters defined. And just with just one click button click, you want to deploy all the host or server and run the application. So this is the main idea of uh, ACD. So first it creates the application template that stores, uh, that has Ansible playbook that stores the various tasks of different servers. Then you can configure the host parameters and in then you can deploy all multiple hosts at once. And once uh, the hosts are deployed and up and running, it will automatically run your Ansible playbook on all the previously provisioned hosts. Now let's talk about how ACD achieves this. For that, Ansible, uh, first you have to create an Ansible playbook which can configure all this, your services of the servers. Then you have to send and store uh, that Ansible playbook in application definition, which act as a template uh, that I was talking about and earlier, which configures everything at one place and can have parameters defined. And then uh, that application template can be used by application instance, which can, uh, and that application uh, instance will deploy all the servers at once and set them up and configure them. And after they are deployed, they, it will run the Ansible playbook. So these are the main three components of ACD, namely Ansible playbook, application definition, application instance. Formant also, ACD also has some roles, namely admin and user. So admin has all the author uh, access uh, through the Formant ACD components, which means they can create the Ansible playbook, application uh, definition, so the whole application template, and they can configure the servers and deploy them as well. And there is another uh, role which is called user. So user basically wants to deploy the host and maybe sometimes want to configure some of the parameters and they just want to deploy and manage those hosts. So uh, users only have access to application instance and where they can deploy all the hosts at once. And maybe if admin gives them permission and don't lock the parameters so they can uh, configure those parameters as well. Now let me give you a quick example of how you can create a web application using three Prometheus uh, servers and one Grafana node. So this is uh, the Foreman tool I'm talking about, which is lifecycle management tool. So here, first you have to create an Ansible playbook. Yeah. 
So in Ansible playbook, suppose you want to create a web app. So web app. Uh, we have two features. Uh, the Ansible playbooks can be stored in your system. So you can use directory and give you give the path of the directory, or you can directly use GitHub or GitLab to uh, give the URL. So um, because sometimes one Ansible playbook is used by the whole organization. So instead of installing, having that playbook in every server, you can have it in GitHub and just sync it from there. So I'll use that. So you copy it and you can mention git branch, commit, or tag as well, but I'm using the main branch. And yeah, it successfully syncs it. And then you have to mention the playbook name as well. Uh, that is stores the different roles and uh, configurations of Ansible playbook. So once you create a Ansible playbook, uh, you have to import groups so that it can import all the group variables of the Ansible playbook. Yeah. Then you have to create a application template, which is done in application definition. So you create an application definition. And there, if you import your groups, there are several Ansible playbooks uh, uh, mentioned and you have to select which Ansible playbook you want to use. So I'm going to use this one. And then you can create your services here based on Ansible group. So there are currently there are two Ansible groups available, Grafana and Prometheus. So I'll have yeah so and you have to define the host group as well. So which operating system you want to use. So I'll and some other configurations like uh, CPU and how much RAM, etc. And you can also define how much, uh, how many servers, minimum and maximum servers it should have. So suppose I want three, so at least there should be two, and not more than four. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Now you can uh, adjust the Ansible uh, variables as well. So here you have option to add the variables. And if your Ansible variable, sometimes the Ansible playbook has complex data. So you have option to add a complex Ansible variable as well. Uh, yeah, so I'm not gonna do that. But if you have a complex data, you can add that. And then you create the application definition. Uh, sometimes you already, uh, admin already has application definition and ansible book uh, playbook created and all you want to you or do is reuse it so we you have option to export uh, the application template which exports ansible playbook as well as application definition so you can export it and then in other system you can import it as well so yeah and once you import it, those uh, both the server services will be available. And all you have to do is assign it a host group, give it a name, and it will create both the application definition as well as Ansible playbook for you. Yeah. And once you have defined the application template, you have to create application instance to deploy the servers. So for that, uh, give it a name. And select the application definition. Now you can see that uh, I, as I mentioned, it should have at least two configured hosts. So it will give me. It will give me a um, nice notice that at least you should have two configured hosts. And you have to select the service. So I'm going to use this. Yeah. So. Uh, sometimes it might happen that there are already many hosts available and you are a new user, so you don't know which 
hosts are ex already exist. So host is host has a unique domain name, uh, which is based on host name. So uh, the form in ACD also informs you if the uh, particular host name is already taken. So you should use different name. So from my phone. And we need one Grafana. So yeah. Now you can submit and create uh, the application instance. So once you create the application instance, so it has four hosts or server, and you can click a deploy button and it will deploy all four hosts at once. After the hosts are deployed, you can see uh, see the report if they are configured properly. So here I have already uh, did that because it takes some time to configure the host and deploy them. So here you can see all the hosts uh, which were deployed. And once they are deployed, it will run the Ansible playbook as well and which can be shown uh, in configuration job. So if you go to configuration job, it will show you, yeah, there was a playbook run, Ansible playbook run for uh, these hosts. And it will give you nice uh, information or report which hosts were run and which failed and which were successful. And if you click on the host, it will give you information as well why they failed. So for example, this failed because there was some package missing in, uh, in Grafana. So it was not able to create that host. Yeah. And now there is a, so when you deploy the host, it automatically runs the Ansible playbook for you. But sometimes you again want to run the playbook or want to configure it, customize it first. So you can do, sorry, uh, yeah. So you can do that as well but if you have not deployed your host then uh, deploy your applications uh, instance then it will show you the error that you have not deployed any host so you can't configure the application in, uh, instance so here you can uh, configure your ansible playbook here uh, for example you can mention the porosity so if there was uh, you see you saw that it was showing that uh, the playbook failed, but verbosity was uh, I'd in default case zero, which is normal. But if you want to debug it and want more information why the playbook failed, you can mention that, uh, increase the verbosity. You can um, mention the tags as well. For example, if you want to run a particular role or task only, or if you want to skip a particular task, you can mention those as well. Yeah, so this was main, and also uh, if you redeploy your uh, application instance, it will ask you if you want to delete all the previously deployed host, or sometimes uh, you create an application instance and you added four hosts, and now you want to add two hosts. So instead of, and you want to deploy again, so instead of deploying the whole application instance that is uh, deploying the six host, you just want to deploy just a new host. And if the host was changed, you can manage that as well. And if you want to delete everything and uh, deploy again newly, then you can do that as well. Yeah, so this was mainly the demo and also, if you want to delete your application instance, you can uh, select if you want to delete the host or just the application instance. So 
suppose you want to uh, delete just one host and the application instance, these three will still be running. Yeah. So now let's jump back to the presentation. So as any other software, the present form in SAD can further be improved. And we are already have future plans for form in ACD. So uh, we want to add more reusable application templates, which contains Ansible playbooks as well as the uh, application definitions so that you can directly use those application templates or uh, you can take them as example and create your own application templates. And uh, we want to have more usage ready Ansible playbooks on GitHub also. So there already exist two Ansible playbooks. One I already showed you, the Grafana and uh, Prometheus one. And there is one uh, called Elk and Kibana. So you can have your Elk and Kibana host as well. We also want to support the Ansible collections. And there is always a possibility to enhance the graphical user interface, uh, like creating multiple hosts in with same configuration with just one click. So as you three, uh, as you see that, I will I had to, I wanted to create three hosts. So I in application instance, so I manually clicked three times and configured everything. But if the configuration is same, I just uh, mentioned that yeah, I want to have four of the same type of host and configure it once and it will automatically create a uh, four host for me. And yeah, uh, there is always a possibility to, to add more tests because the more the tests, the better the plugin. So I have also added the links, uh, some links uh, for you. Uh, for example, we have Artix AG project on GitHub where you can check multiple various plugins. One of them is for an ACD. Uh, which is an application-centric deployment, and it uses smart proxy. So we have a plugin for that as well. And you can check uh, these playbooks out. So I'll give you a quick uh, demo of that as well. So here uh, it is a Elk playbook. So if you want to create your own playbook, what you all all have to do is create a playbook that defines on what host what uh, you want to do for example uh, for all hosts you want to ensure that it is centos 7 and uh, particular versions on elastic nodes you want to run a firewall and uh, etc and then you have to mention those roles uh, individually in roles directory where for kibana elastic you individually explain those roles and you have to uh, very, uh, mention the group variables as well, where you explain uh, what configuration it requires. For example, what port, firewall port it requires, etc. So you can do that as well. So either you can use this uh, ACD playbook directly, or based on this ACD playbook, you can create. If you have your different servers, you can create ACD playbook on, based on that as well. Yeah. So uh, and also we have a very nice form in ACD documentation where it explains everything why you should use form in ACD, how you can use form in ACD, what are the features and how you can configure it. And as I told before that form in ACD is a plugin of form in, So we have form in, uh, website for form in as well. So you can check that out and see uh, what all features Foreman has. And it also mentions uh, different plugins they have. And it has its own community page as well. So you can, if you have questions, you, are, uh, you can mention that as well. And we are always welcome. Uh, we always welcome your uh, ideas and issues. So if you have any a nice idea about form and ACD, or if you want any feature, or if you have any issue, feel free to create an issue in GitHub on form and ACD. Yeah, and if you have for, uh, more questions, so you can, uh, this is my GitHub page, so GitHub Manisha15, 
or you can email me at single at artixte or you can find me at LinkedIn, Manisha Singhal 1501. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. So uh, thank you for the talk and for the insights and the uh, live demos so far. Um, there already is one question in the chat. So everybody who is watching us in the stream, uh, please join the video conference, the BBB, and ask your questions using the chat there. Um, I will uh, repeat the question here on the stream, so it's being recorded. And the question we have in the chat is, does that mean I can reuse existing Ansible roles? Yeah, as I told before, we have uh, created Ansible uh, playbook repository in GitHub. So if you already have Ansible uh, roles, all you have to do is create a repository either on GitHub or a directory where you can use th those roles and define in a playbook what you want to do in those roles. And you can reuse it in ACD. Yeah. Does that clear your question? I don't see anybody typing, and I know people are typing. So, yes, the question is being answered. And somebody else is typing. Let's see if this will become the question. A little bit of delay between the stream. Uh, how do Ansible Tower and Foreman compare? Okay, so in Ansible Tower, you can only run the Ansible playbook and you can dip deploy the host. In Foreman, you can deploy the host and use those Ansible playbooks to configure it. So these are two very different uh, things. So Foreman is to deploy and manage your host. And it's a life sec uh, data center lifecycle management tool. So you manage your host, deploy it, configure it. And in Ansible playbook, you just uh, run those uh, the playbooks and uh, run those roles and tasks on the host. 